Hey guys, welcome to season 8, episode uh, 1 of Bones. Here we go. New season. Alright. So she's been... She's been hiding. Clearly. She changed her freaking hair. And she's been gone for a while. No place is quite close. Give me that you want to go look at Vampa? Damn. Do you really have to look at these while you work? Well, they inspire me. Plot framed her for murder. Let's get you something to eat, okay? Those neurotransmitters of yours aren't gonna fire without your favorite VLT from the diner. Ooh. I miss her. Maybe if you spent more time looking into Plot. We can't, you know that. We have nothing on him. You know what? He was in my house. Well, he raced himself with computers, that's his thing. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with all of your theory. The issue now is Dr. Brennan, she's a fugitive. I'll get you a sandwich. Roast beef, right? Uh, no, oh, I got it. That's right. Tuna, extra mayo. Just because this is my office now, doesn't mean I stole it from Dr. Brennan. That's your you office? I told you everything I discovered. And I need you to put it in a binder, because we use binders now, so everyone has access to the same information. Brennan didn't use binders. What? I am not Dr. Brennan. She won't do any of the written reports for the binders. Yeah, because if you can't do the job like Brennan, he's not he... Dr. Brennan, Angela. And he is the resident forensic anthropologist here. You will respect him. I don't believe this. Bruh. I mean, don't you care? No, no, don't. Don't go there. Not with me. We are all doing what we can to get Dr. Brennan cleared and back here. Bruh. Tell me. That is such a wig, right? Now, uh, place your cursor on the top. Top of the far left column. Maybe you can talk to Seeley. Palant's threatening to file charges for stalking. Well, Seeley isn't going to listen to anyone until Palant's locked up. You know that. And you say this tip was anonymous. This is just was weird. Oh. I found it like this. The remains were uncovered through keyhole excavation and then through step trenching. Each layer has been revealed and highlighted by brushing, not digging. Very professional. No. Very. Thus making it possible for forensics experts like us to pinpoint time of burial. Dr. Brennan. It's also possible that these remains are Dr. Brennan's and that Pallant is playing with us. Put together a search team now. Dr. Brennan's been here. I want to brought in. Now. Oh, okay. The other sound better. It's a symbol of hope. Okay, meaning rebellions are built on hope. This pelvic inlet belongs to a woman who has never given birth. Oh, it's just so wonderful to have your attention. I'd like you to send everything we had to proof and a data that. Your express instructions were to avoid the email in any case involving Pallant. There's no evidence that Pallant is involved here, and I think Booth should have this news immediately. Mm. How are you communicating with Pallant? I can't tell you, because she made me promise. Bones has been missing for three months. You have been communicating with her for three months. I haven't. You won't tell me how. I haven't even told Hodgins. Hodgins gets to go home every night with the woman he loves and gets to see his child. I don't. I'm sorry. I'll tell her that you love her. Like I always do. Great, thanks, but I'll tell her myself. situation. I would like to see Booth standing there with his pen and index cards. Well, you see Cam, right? You know who she's talking to? She's talking to Booth. Booth. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. The guidance counselor you have on your slab? Don't say it that way. She used to be a person. A person who went to her high school. Christopher Blond. Ooh. That's right. Do you think Dr. Brennan thinks he killed her? Not in the least. You're on your way there, aren't you? Nope. I'm on my way to Atlantic City. And after this conversation, this phone goes dead. Got it. <laughs> oh, God. I hate this man. Okay, what? I don't think you're being completely honest with me. And you have trust issues stemming from I don't know, a 
bunch of psychological crap. Who heads off to Atlantic City? I'm sorry to hear that Agent Booth is still struggling with his gambling addiction. You hear from Booth, you call me. There's one around here, so damn clever. I don't know if that guy's a problem or not. Like, if he's just doing his job, or if he's... Oh, that's... Bones? <laughs> Look at her, huh? And you're okay. She's okay too, right? We're better now. <laughs> well, I tell her about you every day, and she is quite brilliant. Of course, she takes after her dad, huh? <laughs> the dada. She's a dada. Sure is. Yes. Aw. <laughs> Look at this. Breakfast. Dad and I started looking into Plant's history growing up. School records, newspaper clippings. That's when we found out that his high school guidance counselor disappeared. No explanation, just vanished. He was doing uh, cross-country training in the woods. Exactly. So I called huh. the area for weeks until I found some discolored vegetation. Yes, yeah, that's because organic content decomposing changes the appearance of plant life, right? Does it? Yes. Oh wow! Well, you know I missed you so. Yes. I was reading some of your books. They're thick. They're they're really they're heavy. <laughs> I've only had time to excavate the remains, so all I have to examine are these photographs. Well, Booth being here changes everything. I know. They're staining to the trabecular of the sternum. There must have been a lot of internal bleeding for staining this deep. Mm. The trauma to the posterior aspect of the skull shows fracturing, which reach a depth of 10 to 14 millimeters. This fracturing looks like it was made while the victim was moving away. Please put your findings into the binder. So what we have here is a deep initial blow, and then a quick extraction. There's a rock. Red agate. What? But it was definitely red agate. <sighs> Did you put your findings into the binder? Hodgins? Hodgins told me to look at everything fresh. Forget about the triangle. And do we hate him or love him for this? We love him. So you got suspended because Pallant made it look like Brennan was paying you off so you wouldn't arrest her. I can prove that it was done, but I, I can't tie it back to Pallant. He used a parameterized complexity, which is this. He covered his tracks. But you can't clear him. Totally. I'm gonna send this to the computer forensics team at the FBI. There we I go. Put back on this case and put that rank little weasel in jail for the rest of his squally ass life. Do I sound better? Yes. Not nearly enough. Well, I'm just warming up. <laughs> well, I can't live like this anymore. Girl, how, how do you? What are we gonna have if they catch you? Yeah. Are you in jail for the rest of your life? I feel like anyone who looks at you is like, that's a wig. <laughs> When you analyze the idiolect used in this lab, everyone I talked to today is trying to give me a headache. <laughs> the language facts, right? the linguistic variations of the author, they're like stylistic and psychological finger. When I did a multivariate analysis on the other letters of recommendation from the guidance counselor, I found far more descriptive and modified linguistics. Let me guess, but not in the recommendation she wrote for Pallant. Pallant may be able to erase what he wants digitally, but he doesn't know how to erase his writing style. So he wrote the recommendation himself and then killed her so he could go to a school he wanted to? Well, Stanford was the only school he applied to. Little toad like getting his way even then. And this is the last recommendation That's crazy. before she disappeared. Brennan's probably going crazy not being able to get her hands on these remains. I'd like her to know that we're making progress. That is an accurate assumption. Um, do you think that you could do me a favor? You've been talking to her. You don't trust me? It's not about that. If, if I'm the only one who knows, then everybody else is clean. You know it has to be that way. Yeah, but you have, you have a family and help? kids and... If this doesn't work out, then you're an accomplice. <laughs> Holy motherfucker! Beautiful flowers, Dr. Hodgins. If you threaten any of us, it sounds like you're threatening me, Dr. Hodgins. I am. I will kill you. Know that. While exhibiting anger and hostility toward authority, Dr. Hodgins uses harmless conspiracy theorizing as an outlet. Thoroughly pro-social and empathetic, Hodgins represents no threat. 
punch him in the nose. Sorry, you're not capable of killing me. <laughs> People change. That's an interesting fact. You're gasping for air, but see, it's not your lungs that are crying out for oxygen. It's your brain. That's what's dying. That brilliant brain of yours. Yeah, you're getting weaker, aren't you? Hmm? A little dizzy. I sound very far away, don't I? And that big brain of yours isn't much help now, hmm? Is it? Damn. Salant was there. How about we talk about that? Did you interact with him in any way? No, I did not. No matter what he says. What's that supposed to mean? It was mostly Brennan. Or someone else. Mm. Telling Booth that she was okay. Or somebody else. Got it. She was waiting for me to tell her that I had figured out how Pallant framed her for the murder of Ethan Sawyer. Which I have not been able to do yet. Well, I'll tell you what you're gonna do. <sighs> then I will arrest you. Oh, cut that out. Now, you will not. I know what you're trying to do, Agent Flynn. <laughs> you will not. isn't going to show up at the next drop now that Pallant knows his flower system. True. I'm not going to lead you back to her. But if you want to follow me, I hope you like Mexican food because we're headed for the border. There's something nobody knows that I'm going to tell you now. Oh! I lied to Flynn, I interacted with Pallant. I choked him until he was unconscious. I was going to kill him. Until I remembered that if I did that, Brennan would never be able to come home. <laughs> was he waiting to get in the elevator and then freak out? I choked a man until he passed out. A bad man who killed people. <laughs> You're hinting that if I had killed him, I'd be bad too? And Tim, he, he was staring in my face while I did it, and what I read there was, do it, do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> what I know is that you and I need to discuss the fact that you're capable of murder. Not cold-blooded murder. If it's true that Pallant actually wanted you okay, to kill Okay, but everyone's capable of murder. Everyone can kill someone else. It just depends on the level of how likely. Okay, the key will be to tie Pallant to the murder specifically. You mean tie the weapon to the murderer? <laughs> Dr. Burnham would have done that better too, I know. Poor guy. I apologize for what you're working toward here to clear Dr. Brennan and bring her home will most likely lead to you losing your position here. Definitely occurred to me. Yeah, what didn't occur to you was to do a bad job. He's great. He's always been great. The arrangement was always that if Dad wasn't back from a pickup in six hours, Christine and I would get the hell out of job. Max is terrible, I'm guessing. Max has a good reason for not coming back. I had to go. You know why? You understand? I understand, totally. I didn't know what else to do. I, it would never be my first choice to cause you pain. Look, he's not back in an hour. We have to go. Ow. Shit. Shit. I will take this and Mr. Pallant will come after this one and I will kill him. No, 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 no. And I will kill him. Booth, listen, I tried to talk some sense into Brennan and try to bring her in. Sure you did. She's heading south on State Road 47, north of Cullen. She's driving a uh, 86 blue Toyota Cressido. That's many of the words. You're the second person to call that car in a storm. <laughs> Shit! You need to leave. I beg your pardon? And take Clark with you, and the security guards, and everybody. What about you? I will be in my office getting caught up on the white binders. And seeing absolutely nobody you shouldn't see. I don't understand. Are all the security guards coming into this facility?
This is exactly what Hodgins well, like, enjoys doing. <laughs> Clark is very organized. I really missed you so much. That's great. Okay, you? That's great. <laughs> oh, it's a crack. All right. Um... I'm very uncomfortable about this. You know, as an FBI agent, it's my sworn duty to arrest Dr. Brennan. It's so good to see you, by the way. It's been too long. <laughs> me too. Just give her a name, okay? If she can't find an answer, you can arrest her and, and me for harboring a criminal. Me too. Computer forensics guys will look at it. Well, how about we get your full statement first about where you disappeared to and who you've been? Forget with. procedure. Let's get this to forensics now. As far as any government agency is concerned, client is clean, Seeley. If I go after him with no cause, how are you gonna feel when he walks away from this murder just like all the others? Are ready yet? How are you going to feel if you're going to kill someone you know? Damn it! So get his ass out of bed. <laughs> okay, so you're saying she was hung, gutted, and bled? That is consistent with both Dr. Soroyan's and Dr. Edison's findings. It's a rock found in Virginia. Why are your findings included I, I in Dr. Don't... Edison's binder? <laughs> really? Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's all here. <laughs> I did a model of what the... Agate would have looked like to make the wound track. Pallant snared the victim while she was running through the woods. As she fell backward, her head hit the rock. The wound attracted because she's being pulled up. Get out of here, Miss Now That's I've seen a murder of her. Nice. Nice. The genius can make a few mistakes. It's too tight. Not for me, it isn't. Let's go. 8 a.m. on a Sunday morning, this better be good. They took Pallant into custody after hacking into an FBI email system, so we have a little room to breathe. Uh, I'll be damned. Hell Don't yes. Don't be so surprised. You made Clark send that email to set up Pallant. Oh, you and your conspiracy theories. Are you any closer to tying the murder to Pallant? Which is why you can tell security that they won't be needed on a Sunday to check the lab, because I'll be here to look after things. That is very generous of you. Hey, I'm nothing if not dedicated. <laughs> Ethan was extremely schizophrenic when he wrote this. We don't really know how much reality he could grasp. Mm -hmm. It's not gobbledygook. It's triangle. It's a scientist's effort to distill uh, human motivation into a rational construct, correct? That's one way to put it. There are three sides to a triangle. <laughs> Your understanding of geometry is not very advanced. Well, I wasn't finished. The base is his constant rebirth into innocence, you know, the face that he shows the world. Okay. Side number two is his secret persona. Pilot wants one of us to kill him. Uh, okay. So he is kind of suicidal. Right, so right in the dumper with that one, huh? Why would you say that? Face went open. Blank. No, oh, blank is Angel's thinking face. It means they were alone. <laughs> I don't understand what you're thinking. Dr. Edison Unless was that's... extremely thorough. Everyone hates and turn those into those white blinders. You figured that the weapon was a heavily weighted object, like an, an axe, because Plant was small in high school. In fact, he was heavy. A 200 pound person puts approximately 600 pounds of pressure on their knee joints just by walking. Even after the weight is lost, there are lingering symptoms of osteoarthritis which affect gait, carriage, and posture. What? Oh, that was bad. In the vernacular, yes. The salient point is so he's that overweight. the weapon 16-year-old Christopher Plant used to kill Kara Morrissey weighed significantly less than an axe. Plant used a Japanese sword? Dad had coffee with Plant's grandfather a couple of times. He fought in World War II, Pacific Theater. It was common for soldiers to bring Look back souvenirs. Look at y'all go. Battle. You got him. Let's go. Is this it? I don't know where I belong. I don't know where I went wrong. I belong with you. You belong with me. You're my sweet home. Satisfied? I belong with you. You belong with me. You're my sweet home. So nobody came out of that door? <laughs> that is great. I have officially relinquished control of the Major Crimes Unit to my good friend, Seely Booth. Oh, I get my office back now. All right, but I'm keeping the chair. Mm, not the chair. 
Duke Kamaski would still have serious. It's like lumbar nirvana. We'll figure that out. <laughs> All right. Anyway, not that I have not enjoyed working with you squints, but um, I'm going to take my chances with domestic terrorism. Uh, less prickly type of personality over there. I would like to announce that Dr. Temperance Brennan is no longer a suspect in the murder of Ethan Sawyer and can resume her rightful place at the Jeffersonian. That was so The Jeffersonian actually needs two forensic anthropologists. One to solve crime and the other to pursue serious archaeological work. I hate crime and I love serious archaeological work. I love crime. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Can you please take that wig off? Well, hey, look at that. Bones is back. Right. You would have been an accomplice. We needed you here to catch Pawn. Bones, you don't have to explain. You did the right thing, I understand. I'm sorry. Why are you sorry for doing the right thing? I'm sorry for how you must have felt when I did the right thing. Yeah, you know what? I think I can. I was born. Oh no! <laughs> oh boy. Boo. What? What happened? That is a fully accredited representative of the Egyptian government, which I wasn't certain still existed. What did you mean? What? Palat is not Palat. That man is Bassam Al Fayed. No, that is most certainly Christopher Pallon, his physiognomy. His fingerprints, DNA, work history, medical records, everything identifies him as El Fayat. So does his official history. Left Egypt, age six, boarding school in England, Canada, then high school and university here. You said that he wiped what? out his identity and created a new one. You Good. got to be kidding Please. me. If you hurt him, you will lose your job. <laughs> Bones! That's assault. She assaulted me. I'm a witness if you want to stay here and press charges. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna kiss her. It's a marigold. What's marigold! Pain and grief. What? Why'd you take the flower? There's an amazing, amazing song by a very incredibly underrated uh, artist named Gabe Lee, and the song is named Marigold. <laughs> uh, amazing song. Um, it's cold in Mississippi. <laughs> um, interesting. Honestly, him picking up that flower kind of threw me off. Like the video, comment down below, subscribe if you have not already on to the rest of Season 8. I will see y'all next time.